Okay, well, finally, um, last but not least, we have Ashwena Mountainot, who recently graduated from University of Washington with her Master's in Science.
Now, the previous data that we saw in Python we saw is not very uh, human readable, right? So we need a tool that will convert these formats into something that we can ingest and perform. And annotation tools is what it, what we use. So annotation tools are important in terms of both uh, the input and the output. So when we're providing input to the YOLO models, which are basically images, so we have to also provide uh, provide them with uh, labels, right? So we use these annotation tools to create bounding boxes and labels and feed them into the model. So the tools that we we explored a host of tools and we finally settled on Robux as a tool. So this tool was picked for a lot of these factors. So first, it's very very intuitive. So a, even a fresher can just get into uh, Robux flow and start annotating objects, whereas just drawing the bounding box manually is really uh, images. And price wise, also it is a little pricey for the paid version, but if you are just exploring as a user, uh, they have like a free tier that you can use it and use up. And one very important thing that we had was uh, the need for collaboration. So we had like a host of images of almost 400 to 500, and each of these images had uh, 60 to 70 annotations that a single person could not do. So what the, uh, RoboFlow allowed us to do was divide this entire uh, workflow into like two, three people, and all of us collaborated and together we sort of uh, annotated this project. And once we had collaborated and annotated the project, we had to get it reviewed by a subject matter that is a hosting expert. So RoboFlow also provided uh, the review the review of the reviewers, where it allowed us to assign a reviewer that can check our work and sort of uh, get make it better. And in terms of versatility, RoboFlow had like a host of inputs and outputs where uh, it can give out outputs for any model that is that can be used. So your uh, your V1, V1, V5, V8, so any of the models that could that are out there it could give out the uh, outputs. And it's also like a plug-in place, so it could divide the entire data set into test chain and uh, validation data sets, which could easily be fed into the model. So we didn't have to do anything overhead to uh, clean it up. So coming to applications of object detection, what I found out from this project was it was not just limited to visual data, where what uh, it could uh, define the objects that we could see, but it can also be applied to these host of other images, like satellite images, audio data, and multi Thank you so much. short of manpower, so we didn't have a lot of chance to explore, to explore it, but definitely I would like to like, hear more about other topics and how I could have made these better. Thank you so much. Was the choice to use a uh, vision-based model specifically made to cause it to ease the annotation part, or had you already settled on that and that was sort of a happy coincidence? Uh, yeah, so the way we received this project was because the people that we were working with were already comfortable in annotating like visual data because visual data is something that uh, is more discernible than audio data. So the audio data that we had here was like 30 minutes of silence and just like one random uh, noise burst out there. So I think visual data proved to be like work better than audio data. Yeah. Uh, so you Thank you so much. Enjoy.